Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. I've been reading the comments and a lot of you guys are saying you're in lockdown and you have nothing to do and you're really enjoying this video. So guess what guys? We're going to deliver for you. We're going to do extra videos this week and maybe next week and we'll see as we go down the line what we do. A lot of comments I've read in the last several videos is those are nice lifts. How do you use them? Not everybody has ever used a lift. After the fifth and sixth and seventh question, how do you use a lift? How do you use lift? I was like, okay, we need to do a video. Okay, go ahead and pull forward, Mrs. Wizard. Okay, just stop right there. When you pull the vehicle up to a lift and get ready to position the arms, you can't just stop right in the middle of the lift. And let me show you why. You can't get out. You have to pull forward past a little ways, like that. Then you turn the vehicle off. Make sure it's in neutral. So you want to have it in neutral so that you can manually roll the vehicle to the position that you want. If you throw it in park, you just made the vehicle unmovable. You can't do that. You have to leave it in neutral until you can get it to where you want. And once you get it up in the air, then you can put it in park. And I really recommend, especially on General Motors trucks, once you get your lift up in the air, it needs to be in park and the key off and all the way out because the batteries will be dead soon. So we've got it in neutral. The engine is off. We're going to push this vehicle back a little ways and then we're going to talk about the actual lift. Look at the different features and buttons and things that are actually on the lift itself. We use the tire to push the vehicle because what that does is keep your hands from, especially on expensive cars, you don't just go pushing on the body could crack the plastic or fiberglass or whatever. It really wouldn't hurt this truck. It wouldn't do any damage to it, but that's just a habit that I get into. If I move a vehicle, it's by the wheels, by the tires. And this is our Dodge Ram, so I'm not too worried about scratching it or doing anything to it, but we'll talk more about the truck here in a minute. Let's take a look at the actual lift itself. So these are the pillars. This is the actual the weight bearing portion of the lift and it's bolted into the floor with concrete anchors. These were just recently installed, as you saw in previous videos, Binpack gave me these 10,000 pound lifts. Had them installed. They drill into the concrete and they put these anchors in. This is 8 inch concrete down here. It's very, very thick. It used to be a factory. This is the actual frame piece where the weight of the vehicle is actually going to be placed on. This here is called the power unit. This is the reservoir. There's hydraulic fluid inside of here and this is where you fill it. You can take the little cap off. There's a dipstick, but that's where the fluid goes. It's a hydraulic fluid that actually pumps into the cylinders that are inside these pillars. Okay, and this here, this little floppy lever, is actually your, your release. When you go to let the lift down, you will release the pressure with this, and the vehicle will start sinking down. This electrical button here, it operates the pump. It builds pressure. There's really three items. There's the pressure release, the motor switch to actually operate it, and this is the safety release. There's safety latches built into both of these pillars. So you'll hear it when we go to raise the vehicle. It goes click, click, click as it's going up. And once you get it to a certain height, you release the pressure till it rests on the safety locks. The vehicle is no longer resting on hydraulic pressure at that point. It's resting on the safety latches inside of here. Whenever you are done with a vehicle, you can't just do the pressure release and let it down. You have to get your safeties released by pushing this red lever. It releases both safeties on either pillar. Then you can push the pressure relief and it will start lowering the vehicle. If you don't release this safety, it won't do anything when you push this. Because just like I said, the weight of the vehicle is no longer resting on hydraulic pressure. It's resting on these latches, these safety latches. And the last part of the lift to talk about really is the actual arms. As you can see them down there, they're yellow. They're extendable. 
one arm is longer than the other, that's called asymmetrical. And the reason why is so that when we get it on the lift, the vehicle actually is, sits back a little ways to allow you to open the doors and get in and out of the vehicle if you need to. It's a lot harder on a lift that's not asymmetrical, that it's symmetrical, where both arms are equal length and your door opens and hits the pillar. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the lift. Let me show you guys how to do that. Now these arms come with these spacers. This is adjustable by threads here. But if you need more or more lift than that, there's these spacers. The reason why I use these spacers is because, like on this vehicle, we're going to be lifting on the frame, the actual true frame of the vehicle, not the body. And sometimes the frame, if you look underneath a truck, is wavy. It goes higher up at this portion and then lower at this portion. You have to accommodate for that by using these spacers. And you will see that as we get this on the lift, what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and swing the arms underneath the vehicle. As you can see, it's extendable. Swing that one up there. I always start with this back one and work my way around. I'm going to get this thing set up for you and I'm going to go ahead and lift it. And then we'll talk about what I did once it's in the air. It'll be a lot easier for you guys to see. You can see we got the fuel tank right here, and we also have an e-brake cable. We'll have to go right along the fuel tank up to the frame and move the cable out of the way. We'll get to that in a minute. Now let's go move to the front arm. Pull it in a little bit. You want it centered on the frame right here. As you can see, the distance from here to here is about equal to the distance from here to there. That means that when you go to raise the arms, they will meet the frame at the same time. And I'll show you that as we get to that point. We'll go to the other side. Now, just like we did on the driver's side, we'll do a very similar thing on the passenger side. That one's set up for the rear right there, right centered on the frame. And there we go for that one. Now we'll raise it up and I'll show you everything that we did and go into a little bit more detail. The only thing we have to do now, once we got the arms in place, everything set up where we want it. We don't have to push any, any levers or anything. We just push the motor switch that operate the motor. Once we get about two or three inches off the ground, I usually stop. And I kind of walk around and check, make sure everything looks even, nice and safe. I also will go and check all my arms again to make sure they're centered on the frame and not resting on an exhaust pipe or something crazy. Now we can move our parking brake cable out of the way. You can't go any further in that way because the fuel tank's in the way. But we're on the frame nice and safe and the cable's not going to get caught up. The next thing I do is kind of bounce the truck or car or whatever. Make sure it doesn't do this weird teetering thing. When somebody brings a truck, especially a truck or a cargo van into a shop, you don't know what's in the back. They might have four 55 gallon drums full of paint or oil or whatever they do for their business. And what looks like should be a nice even load may not be. And you go to lift it and the whole thing just tips and falls off. You want to find out that it's going to do that when it's only this far off the ground not five feet off the ground. So I give it a nice good bounce. It's nice and steady. So we can continue going up from here. Now you guys are gonna hear the clicking I talk about, the safety latches of this little red lever.
One thing to be mindful of when you're lifting a vehicle is the roof. There is a safety up there, a little bar that if it hits the bar, it'll shut the lift down. But you still want to be careful that there might be not ladders up there or luggage racks or something along that that you don't crush the customer's property. We're, all, we're okay on this truck and we've gone as far up as I want to go. Right now the truck is resting on the hydraulic fluid, on the pressure in the lines is actually what's holding this up. We're going to allow the weight to be transferred over to the safety locks by doing the pressure release. There we go. The truck is now resting on the safety latches and not on the... You don't want it resting on hydraulic pressure in case a line were to blow or anything could fail. Now we're safe. We're rested on metal, solid metal latches. So let's go under the truck and take a look at the arms. You can choose how high or low that you want it. This is about the height that I would want as I can stand up straight. I don't like to be under a lift crouching and my knees are shaking and all that. I like to stand up nice and straight. But as you can see, we've got this as far over as we can without hitting the tank. That's nice and safe. We got the cable out of the way. That's where that arm is. As you can see, these, these pieces, these spacers here, the difference from the arm to the frame is way greater than it is on one of these front ones. You have to account for that with the shape of the frame. If we were to put this much height on the, on the rear as well, the whole truck would be cattywampus up on the lift. The rear end would be way low. It would be very unsafe. You have to get the vehicle level by using these spacers. You can adjust, as you can see with threads, you can fine tune it with the threads. Here we are centered here. And that's pretty much it for how to operate it. Like I said a minute ago, this vehicle has a true frame. These are things you have to keep in mind when a car comes into the shop and it needs to go on the lift. If I see a truck get pulled in, I know. We're going to lift it by the frame. That's the strong structure of this truck. Now we're getting ready to show you guys a, a car, a unibody car, where the body itself is the frame. So I'll lower this back down. I'll show you how to lower a vehicle. So the weight of the vehicle right now is on the latches. It's, it's strong enough, enough weight that you can't, you can't release the latches. So you have to get the weight transferred back off the latches and onto the hydraulic system, like this, with the motor. It's just about an inch or two. Now we're free again. Now the weight is transferred to the hydraulic system. We can release the safety latches by pushing this all the way in flat. And while you're holding that, you have to hold it the whole way down. Then you can do the pressure release. If I let go of the safety latch accidentally, it will rest back on the safety latches. You have to hold the safety release the entire time all the way down or it'll catch again. Once you've used these several times, they're actually very simple. The lift is not what you're so much worried about, it's the safety in the operation of the lift and also not damaging the customer's vehicle. So the vehicle's back down. It got, it's got another three or four inches to get the, the arms all the way back down, but that's what I wanted to show you guys on a frame vehicle. Now we're going to move over to a car that's unibody. Okay, this is a 2014 Bentley Continental. I'm going to get in it and put it in neutral. I'm also going to show you something very, very important, especially on modern vehicles, modern cars with active suspension or air suspension or any kind of computer controlled suspension. You can't just throw them on the lift and start lifting. You'll make the computers very angry with you. Let's go ahead and get this opened up and I'll show you what I mean. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're not going to start the engine. We're just going to turn the ignition on, put it in neutral. So on this particular vehicle, you'll have to research on what vehicle you're lifting. It's going to be different for different models and different makes. But this is a Volkswagen Audi product, and they, whether it's a Porsche, a Volkswagen, Audi, a Bentley, they all have the same procedure. Right here is a button that has a shock emblem and one that has a vehicle lift emblem. I'll show you guys. Right here, you push them both and hold them. You have to keep holding it. And then we see the little emblem came up right here. It's a little car shape that shows lift. That means it's ready to be lifted. The control has been turned off and now it's, it knows we're getting ready to lift this car. So now we can turn it off. So now it's in neutral. We can roll the wheels. This is a very good example of a car that you don't push it by the body and start cracking or breaking something. You push it by the wheels into the position you want. On a lift like, like these are called asymmetrical, you want about a third of it sticking forward of the lift and about two thirds of it sticking out the back. That's the way these are designed. We'll get these lined up. We'll get it lifted up and I'll show you the difference. And I'll show you what I did here. We've already gone through the whole procedure. I showed you guys how to lift it. So that's what we're going to do, the same thing. Okay, let's go underneath and talk about what I did here. As you can see, there's no frame like the truck had. The body itself is the frame. This is called the pinch weld. It goes all along. It's a structural member of the whole body. Every front wheel drive type unit body car has this. Front wheel drive, all wheel drive, really doesn't matter if it's... But this is where you lift it. You can see they have little cutouts here. It's designed for the lift pads to go. These are always flat. You're not going to have one higher than the other, or very rarely. So as you can see on the arms, we have the same distance here, all the way on all four. Same distance all the way around. These are pretty easy to lift. You don't have to have spacers and weird stuff. You just get it under there and start lifting it up. And like I did, we turned off the suspension system. That's very important. You guys need to pay attention to that because you can cause issues with the computer. So that's pretty much all there is to it, it lifting a car. It's either frame or unibody. Well, I know you guys are really bored and have nothing better to do. We're going to take care of that for you and give you guys really cool content to watch. Any tools or anything, uh, check my Amazon affiliate, also in the UK. We're also going to include a link in the description to my friend Elliot. He just started a new channel called Elliot Alvis about Priuses and Hellcats and really cool stuff. Click on that link. You won't be disappointed in his little channel he's got going. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, do that now. We've got many more cool videos to come. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.